So I have to tell you a little funny story here, folks. Last night, I was sitting at home, uh, minding my own business, not bothering anybody. And I got an email from a friend who was forwarding an email from his friend. Who, and it was quite a funny email about Chris Christie and his his uh, adventures with uh, Jerry Jones and the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, Sunday for the game with the uh, with the Lions. And the opinion expressed in both emails from these guys was that uh, Chris Christie was... Well, let's put it this way. There were two things. That Christie looked really out of place. It, just, it was sad. Here's the guy in his red sweater. He just looks like he doesn't belong with these sports guys. And they were kind of making fun of him in these emails to me. And they were mocking him. And they were saying, he just, he just, he just looks like a groupie sitting in there. And he, doesn't, he just doesn't look, like he, uh, doesn't look like he belongs. And they both said, I tell you, this guy, he's, he's forcing his way in there. He's calling Jerry Jones. Jerry Jones looks very nervous. He doesn't want Christie in there. But when the governor calls you, you got to put him in there. And then I was treated to their version of political analysis, which that Christie was forcing his way into the Cowboys owner's box to be seen on TV to try to gin up support from Texas conservatives for a future Christie presidential run. Uh, and at the same time to put pressure on, on Rick Perry. And I'm always fascinated by the way people think. I really am. Uh, and I, I looked at these emails and I digested them. And they conflicted greatly with things that I know. So I thought about how to reply diplomatically. And I explained to you yesterday how it works at, uh, at AT&T Stadium. Texas Stadium, Jerry Jones has two locations for himself and fans and friends and family at, at Stadium for Games. He's got his box. It holds about 10 or 12 people, and it's the football people, and it's all business. There's no party in there. I mean, it's catered, but it's all business. Where the people that show up at a football game to be entertained, have fun, and have a party, and eat, drink, and be merry are seated in a huge suite that holds hundreds, one floor below. And Jerry doesn't go there because this is a work day for him. It's a business. It's his team. He's the general manager. He owns it. And these days, Sundays, are not party days. And he only puts real football people in there. And I told these guys, I responded in email. I said, I don't think Chris Christie forced his way in there. I don't think that I don't think the only way Chris Christie's in Jerry Jones' box is if Jerry Jones invited him. And therefore, the theory that Christie's in there for political considerations to take on Rick Perry or to take a, get favorable reaction from Texas conservatives, is it respectfully, I don't think that's what this is about. Uh, I, I think if you want to know what really happened, you've got to answer one question. Why does Jerry Jones want Chris Christie in there? The question is not why does Christie want to be there, because that's easy. Christie loves... Stars. Remember Bruce Springsteen. Remember Christie cried. He told people he cried when he finally got on the phone with Bruce Springsteen the first time. He said, Obama, remember after after they walked arm in arm, side hugged and all that after Hurricane Sandy, one week before the 2012 election? And Christie caught a lot of grief for doing that because it undercut Romney and it promoted Obama. And Christie said, hey, my state got beat up with a hurricane here. I need federal help. And Obama's my buddy at the point. Uh, part and parcel of that was that Obama put Springsteen on the phone with Christie, been a lifelong fan, and, and Christie told everybody, he said he cried. He was so excited. And then, you know what happens next? Springsteen goes on Jimmy Fallon or some other late night TV show and makes fun of Christie over Bridgegate in a specially written song. Now, we don't know, but I guarantee that probably had to really hurt Christie's feelings. He thought he had just become big buds with the boss. It's a big deal. Now, Christie is a huge cowboy fan, and to be invited to that suite, I mean, this is nirvana for him. But the real question is, how does Jerry Jones benefit from having Christie there, if you're really curious about this? And then, lo and behold, the news hits today that indeed old El Rushbow right again, simply following my instincts. It turns out that Jerry Jones had not only invited Chris Christie, 
but flew him to Dallas on the Cowboys' private jet. And would have done so the first time, except Christie was already in Texas. I guess he was already taking on Rick Perry and trying to gin up favor among Texas conservatives. He was down there, and he was already in Texas, so Jerry Jones invited him. But this time, Christie was back in New Jersey, got invited, and he went. Wife, kids, family, and all that. But you'll notice that, that Christie's wife was downstairs. She wasn't in that business-only football suite where Jerry Jones was. And then if you read further, you find out that there is an observation deck on top of the Freedom Tower. And did you know who owns or who has invested in that observation deck? Why, none other than Jira Jones of the Dallas Cowboys. And that observation deck is essentially a, a concession place that is expected to generate, what did I read today, $815 million or $850 million in profits over whatever number of fears in the future. And then you find out that the Port Authority of New Jersey and New York and wherever runs the damn thing or, or regulates it. Well, then, and you find out that Christie is a major part of that. I mean, if Christie can close bridge lanes, he has influence on this concession here at the top of the Freedom Tower. So it all finally comes together. And it still doesn't take away from the fact their characterization of the way... you know. Just, I mean, I don't want to read the emails I got verbatim, but they were hilarious in their characterizations of what was uh, what was going on. And it furthermore, all kinds of people just started talking about, well, you know what? Christie's really stepped in it now. This probably proves he doesn't want to be president because these are major ethics violations. No, they're not, because there used to be a governor before Christie named was Jim McGreevy, and he was a real odd duck. But one thing McGreevy did... <laughs> There is no ethical problem with it. It's perfectly legal for a governor to accept trips on somebody, private jet, friend, or what have you. There's no ethics problem here whatsoever in terms of the law. Voters, their perception, that may be another thing. 